the way. Yes. <laughs> Something new. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pretend to sing because I don't want that safe in for everyone to hear in the right. future. <laughs> all all, the, all the things I said that. last week apparently were saved. Good God. <laughs> <sighs> I gotta remember. I can't. Miss Maka. You look <laughs> can't just say whatever I want. Okay, is everybody ready? Yep. Yes. All righty. <clears throat> <laughs> it is Friday, January 4th, 2019. I'm Whoa. Micah Sargent, and right now we are going to talk about Apple's Doom uh, and, you know, stuff that's happening in the new year. Because this is the iMore Show. Music, 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 music. Joining us this week is the hooded, the mysterious, the ever present in the world of tech. It's Renee Ritchie. Bum, bum, bum. No New Year's Day to celebrate. <laughs> no chocolate covered candy hearts to give away. Is anybody still listening to the podcast or did they all just press stop? They all said goodbye. They, they said it's a new year and this year I'm not subjecting myself to covers of any songs. I'm going to go listen to one of them other Micah Sargent podcasts instead. I don't have to put up with this nonsense. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Happy How are you new doing, year, Renee? Micah. Good. It's just, it's cold. Well, actually, it's, it's not terribly cold in Canada, but I'm still cold. I That hat is so Canada. There's Canada it everywhere is. on the hat. I, I bought it when I went on a trip to the U.S. so that people would know that I was Canadian and I might get better treatment. I I'm love it. I'm not ashamed it. to say it. And I it want, worked. And it worked, I'm sure, yeah. It's like, oh, we've got a Canadian here, eh? Oh, yeah. Nice. They like sort of, they go down to like three quarters speed and they think that you're you're a little bit special because you're from another country and then they're nicer <laughs> to you. They don't expect you to know everything. Oh, that's sweet. I think <laughs> it's also kind of like condescending yeah. and patronizing. I don't know. Uh, well, we also have, and, and Lori, I just love the fact that you are always proudly sporting your vector pin. Um, your hair is on fleek today. Uh, <laughs> it looks incredible. You, you know look what, great. Micah, you're not a millennial anymore. On fleek is so 2018. Come on. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> and, and putting me on blast is also or is is new to this year. Uh, oh, Lori's dishing the tea. Lish, it Lori's is. The tea. Spill that tea, Lori G. Uh, thank you for joining us again this week. Thank you for having me. This is my. This is the best that I can do for um, covering a song. I'm gonna pull my microphone away. Oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Because I I got that raspy voice, and that's as good as I get. I, I can dig it. I can dig it. Uh, we also are joined by Georgia Dow. Georgia, what song are you going to sing for us? Um, a Bieber I song. Really I don't really, uh, you know, oh, thank you for being a friend. Yes, that is Georgia's song. <laughs> Travel down the road and back again. again. <laughs> God is true. You're a pal and a You are a golden girl, Georgia. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, and is that a compliment? A compliment. Her gold we have girl. literally no listeners. You invited but. everyone you knew. Okay, we should you probably see the, <laughs> the greatest tech news will be from me. God would say, thank, thank you for being free. So the I'm More show is going a different direction in 2019. We're, We're just going to sing cover songs. It's going to be podcast karaoke. I can dig it. I can dig it. Until Lori starts the hardcore South African rap, and then yeah, it's all over. And then it's over. How, how few people listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Renee, uh, I hear yes. Apple is doomed. Totally. Yeah. So doomed. Uh, yeah. Apple, Apple originally, uh, back when I did the earnings report for, what was it? Q, what, Q4? I don't remember. Yep. Q1 2019. Report. Thank you. Q1 of 2019, Apple said, hey, we have... Uh, 80, we were expecting revenue between 89 and $93 billion. And those revenue estimates have been revised to 84 billion. So from 89 yep. to 93 down to 84. Um, when you're speaking in billions of dollars, I just feel absolutely ridiculous saying anything about anything because I can't <laughs> conceptualize that amount of money in my head. And the difference between... 84 and 89 it's still like that's multi billions of dollars that's bonkers i don't understand what that even means but at the same time you have to go 
there is like those are the, the the difference between the two are several billion dollars. So that's you know what I mean. It's not like several 8%. million dollars. It's, it, yeah, it rounds down to like an eight uh, percent difference, which is because even if you have like ninety three dollars and you only get eighty four, you're like eh, it's seven dollars. I'm really gonna argue over. I mean, some people on this podcast would, but I'm really gonna argue over. <laughs> yeah, but when you start saying it's like eight percent, you're like that's a lot of percent. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean about that much money. You yeah, know. the billion. Yeah, that's it, like it, less billion. When, when, when people just put out this, how much they're gonna like, you know, the difference in between it is in the billions. That sounds like a lot until you find out how much Apple makes. And this is also like, is this profit? Is this how much they're gonna earn? What is this revenue? What do these numbers even mean? It's not profit. It's revenue. Okay. So how much of that is profit? <laughs> we'll have to see. I don't, I don't, they, they, I don't think I don't think because it sounds from all of the articles they did say their margins. So tons of money. They did they did lower their margins slightly. The previous guidance on margins was 38 to 38.5 percent, and the new guidance in that letter was 30 was 38 percent. So it's at the very lowest of what the previous. So that means they're making about 38 percent margin on stuff. So about 38 percent of that will be profit. Yeah, 38 percent on the less. How many billion is how much billion of profit? Let's yeah, they're see. still gonna, and it's, they said it's also still gonna be their highest earnings per share ever, and it's gonna see? be the second highest oh. quarter in the history of Apple ever. That's the thing. What you just said, like it's gonna be so ridiculous. Thirty-eight percent of eighty-four billion. <laughs> You're is... supposed to be a millennial and ask your digital assistant to just tell you. I'm asking Wolfram Alpha. It's like twenty-five oh. billion dollars. Uh, thirty-eight percent of eighty-four billion. Wait, that can't be right. It's like 26 billion. It's, it's trying to tell me 31 billion 920 million, but that's that oh yeah, yeah, that's that's accurate. Yeah, 31 yeah. billion 920 million dollars of profit. Wolf from Alpha is fine. Wolf from in heart is bad. You have to distinguish those two. <laughs> Can we talk about 31 billion dollars of profit? I say again, does anyone know what a billion is? No. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about how much money you're making, Micah. They all care about how much money you'll be making next. That it's is, what have you done for I me think, lately? And I think that's 4.9 times the number of people alive on this planet. <laughs> 38 billion, 31 billion, 920 million is 4.9 times the number of people alive on this planet. So, so, it, but it's a downward have, trend. And, right? and we as like the general kind of consumers of technology and not the analysts, the financial analysts, like to us, it's, it's eye rolling really ridiculous because obviously the company is doing well. It's not doomed. But if you kind of look at that sort of financial... If you, if you kind of think with a financial financial brain, you're seeing um, like a significant drop. And then on top of that, you're, you're seeing like the general tech industry is plateauing and even going down downward. And that can like really create a lot of fear for people who have invested a lot of money in this kind of stuff. What's happening next is the big deal. And um, I think I've read a couple of different articles across the internet about this this idea. And if you think about tech companies that at some point in history were on top, they were number one or at least one of the number one um, tech companies, phone companies specifically, that have just nosedived into almost obscurity. That's a big deal. And these are companies that were just as big as Apple, not finance wise, but as like the top the top popular companies. And they've nosedive and almost completely gone under. So, you if you if you think from the analyst perspective, from the financial perspective, there's a lot of things to be afraid of. Because what does this mean? You know, I'm just saying. I think that my favorite part though is that for the people who aren't investors and people who aren't analysts that are just sort of I'm going to call them Twitter 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 uh, ragers. It was <laughs> like Apple's going to make less money. This is proof positive that whatever bugged me most in the last 10 years is finally coming home to roost. And if Apple had only not jettisoned the floppy drive, not gotten rid of the headphone jack, not gotten rid of the iPhone SE, uh, kept the Mac mini up to date fat. Like you could literally list anything that bugged them. Didn't make prices higher. Didn't, didn't, didn't do this. Then they would be super successful. And, and a lot of publications actually published those articles. I was reading them this yeah. morning and I was very sad. Yeah. Yeah. Those are very ridiculous. Like clearly the problem that Apple is facing is the same problem that all tech companies are facing. That technology is just, it's go it's plateauing right now. The smartphones are plateauing right now. And um, the economy is not doing well, especially in other countries, specifically in China. They're having a lot of, you know, issues with their trade embargo and it's affecting their economy. And there's like, it's, it's, 
it's it's just happening. It has nothing to do with Apple as a company and what they've done right or wrong. I would I would say like maybe what they did wrong was that when they were making their projections, they honestly from the interviews I've heard Tim Cook say he was way too positive about what he anticipated the outcome of the the tariffs in China and the trade issues that are going on. He was too positive about how that was going to end. I think he quoted at one point something like. Um, the U.S. is better with China and China is better with the U.S. and the world is better with both of us. And and yeah, that's true. But that, you know, that didn't really have an effect on the way things have ended up. So I think when you're just, dealing with two authoritarian and unpredictable governments. It's much harder to guess. Than when you're just dealing with one. Lay right? it out for us, Renee. <laughs> Drop no, it's knowledge. true. I mean, mostly the U.S. trade policy has been very stable. Um, like no matter which party was in charge, whether you agree with them or not, uh, everyone seemed to think it was in their best interest to have very stable, very predictable trade. And that is not the case now. Uh, right. Now you don't know from one day to the next what's going to happen. Uh, yeah. And that's always been true in China because it's an, been an authoritarian government that would be motivated by forces, you know, seen and unseen. Uh, and now you have two two cars driving at each other on a dark night on a rainy night, neither of them wanting to turn away. And that's always more dangerous than one one speedster and one real cautious, you know, grown up. Behind the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, China was. I mean, China was bad for because their economy is bad, but also because of the tariffs. And there might be, although Tim Cook downplayed it, there might be some nationalism in China now that's going to say, you know, screw the U.S. You know, they're treating us this way. We're going to go by Huawei instead. Um, We've which, seen that. They are, they're they're that definitely already. pushing that really hard. Uh, yeah, uh, totally. And there were some factors in the U.S. that, that he quoted as well. I mean, the iPhone prices are higher. Um, uh, people did get a lot of battery replacements, which kept their existing devices going longer than they would have previously. Uh, and there there aren't the subsidies. Like it used to be $199 on a carrier mm -hmm. plan, and that's all you saw. And now you go to the store and you see $749 or you see $999 or you see $1199. And you're like, I can wait another year. <laughs> I, I think that people also are, are feeling like they don't have the need to upgrade anymore um that they they have a phone they're going to wait for a little bit longer to be able to deal with it when times are tough like everyone looks at their phones as a necessity and and i i would say that probably in many cases that is true but it's not a necessity to upgrade it and so because of that it becomes one of those you know times are tough we're not going to get the newest and greatest phone and if you think about like when you know a less than 10 years ago, the idea of spending a thousand dollars on something for me personally, that would be like my laptop. So I would think yeah. I'm buying this very expensive thing mm -hmm. that it better carry me for the next 10 years because I'm spending so much on it. And now our phones are that, pr that price. So, you know, it, there's mm -hmm. a lot of people out there who are going to think if I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on a phone, it better last me a really long time. And even though there's, there's upgrade programs across the board that you can kind of like spend a little bit of money each month and get the newest, latest and greatest every year, every two years. I still don't think, I think the the, the total price really does affect people um, as to whether or not they want to upgrade yearly. Um, I, I think it was crazy that we even had an every two year cycle upgrade, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago. But the fact that it started getting to a yearly upgrade seems insane that that technology was allowing for that to happen that like that was the trend it wasn't like only some mm -hmm. people were doing it. a lot of people were doing a yearly upgrade and now i think it's just gotten so expensive that the the idea of upgrading every year is just not working for everyone I and mean, there's a few factors that are really weird here one is like our perception of value like an iphone is something that you use for hours a day every day mm -hmm. and when you amortize that expense across the like, course of a year one year two years let alone five years it's not that expensive we play we pay like what 800 percent markup on a bottle of water uh, and we pay tremendous amounts of money for all sorts of things in our life that we you or like the like Starbucks coffee. And Renee, when you people look at don't it, want to hear what you're saying right now. I know, I know. Like we we waste so <laughs> much, but like all of those are very small. They're microtransactions essentially compared to a phone, and we've just uh, sort of associated them with our cost of living. So it's very different. But Apple's actually gone out of its way to make the phones last longer. Like they build them out of much better materials than most manufacturers. Not all, but most better. Like they are stainless steel and glass at this point. Very high quality glass. 
they've also put chips in them that they've specifically designed to last to, to make the phone still run really well for five years. They've always done updates and they've committed to doing updates going five years back. So even if you have a five-year-old iPhone 5S, which is for most people still in great shape because it is built like a little brick, mm -hmm. um, you still have the latest operating system on that. Uh, and they've got this whole program with with uh, Lisa Jackson on, on recycling and renewing and making sure phones last and get handed down. And this is not by make no mistake, like a lot of people will look at that and say, that makes no sense. Why would Apple want people to keep their phones longer? And I think the answer is that Apple realized because they they have all the detailed information. They realized that smartphones were reaching saturation a few years ago and that there would be a certain point where everybody who has an iPhone, everybody who wants an iPhone has an iPhone and one that they are happy with. And then the sales spike would stop. And but the installed base doesn't have to stop because when people do buy and they hand down those phones instead of, oh, I'm going to get the kids a cheap Android phone here. Here's my two year old iPhone. And if that you look at the numbers, well. yeah. yeah. And if you look at the numbers, even in China, where they took the biggest hit, their install base still went up. Their install base in general went up 100 million units. Sure. Uh, uh, which is a, a vast amount and their services revenue because people say, oh, Apple's you know in trouble in China because WeChat means that you're not loyal to iPhone. You can switch to any phone that has WeChat. And that's partially true. But Apple services went up considerably in China as well, which meant that there are people who do like Apple devices and very unusual for any market, let alone China, are willing to pay for it. Like the App Store revenue in China, people don't pay for apps traditionally in any part of the world, much less China. The App Store revenue was up as well. So I think Apple's new model is is recognizing the saturation and trying to get as and trying to instead of building up iPhone, they're using iPhone now to build up everything else. And I think that's like that's the biggest thing here is is to take away is what are tech companies, Apple specifically, and all tech companies in general, what are they doing to future proof the company? Um, when we know that sales spikes have have stopped and now we're plateauing or even going downhill. And I think Apple is doing exactly the right stuff. They're they're building that foundation for what's to come, which is less phone sales, more other ways to create revenue. Services and and that's and something that's not being talked about in with all of the sort of tech companies is they're they're leaving out or the financial analysts at least they're leaving out the fact that Apple has already started establishing a way to continue to grow the company even while the entire industry of phones is starting to fade isn't it Amazon that every year like barely makes any profit but the company keeps plugging along like it was, I push it the was like that, but I'm I'm not sure if it still is it, so what they, they they reinvest the money into the company rather than extracting it as profit. But Wall Street loves that because it means that there's so much potential to make profit. See, if you're making a billion dollars, Micah, I don't really care about you. But if Georgia has the potential to make a billion dollars, that's so much more exciting because she's going to grow. But that's that's the way the stock market works, right? It's yes. in, in, in the amount that you can increase to it because if you buy it's something for 200 and it can become 300, that's a 50% amount of growth in between that. If you make 400 and it goes down to 399, you've actually lost 1% of everything that you've invested into it. And that's why the stock market, like it's really invested in, in that. If you don't play the stock market and you're not really dealing with that, this has really little effect on you. Like I think that in a lot of ways, companies make the, the greatest jumps and strides when they're actually in a point of saying, you know what, how are we going to restructure things to be able to make a difference and do something else? I think that complacency is not great for a company, just like it isn't great for you and I. So I don't think that this is a bad thing in any way, shape or form, but I actually don't even think that this is a big deal, even for the stock market. Because if Apple goes down a little bit, that means next year it can go up a little bit more. That's true. That's true. And I guess, so at the end of the day for me, because I don't give to uh two of rolf's uh little turds that uh <laughs> that the stock market has it like i don't give i don't care about those things i just want apple to continue to innovate and make cool new things for me to buy yeah. and i realize that that's not everybody's thing and actually my partner was just complaining the other day because he does have some stock in apple and a few other companies and tech right now as a whole is not doing super super great and so he lost like a thousand dollars in stocks meanwhile i'm over here like so what? I just want cool new stuff from these companies. And that's all I care about. And Apple, I think that, you know, them sort of uh, talking about how they're not doing unit uh, stuff whenever they do their their 
their financial calls and and everything there it's all just sort of separating this game of data from uh, <laughs> the game of data winter is coming uh from the rest of 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 what apple's doing and like innovating and making cool new products for its customers which is sort of the when you say why are you not doing unit sales anymore apple has like this little business card that everybody pulls out and they read the little text on it and it's like uh innovation and pleasing our customers is what i'm supposed to say here and i'm fine with that because for me, that's all I care about. Whenever Apple's glasses ship, I can be excited that they, you know, spent money creating those glasses or the new iPhone that finally, for goodness sake, comes in green. Whatever it <laughs> happens to be, I that like that's what I care about. And so as long as the company continues to innovate and make cool gadgets that I get to have, I'm happy. And I'm sorry that there are those people out there that are stressed out about the uh they have to somehow keep making money, even though they're the earningest company or whatever. That, however, that's, that all that's works. exactly what I'm talking about, Micah. Your your partner who lost a thousand dollars recently, Apple is in it for the long game. So if your partner was retiring this year, then yeah, he would have lost some money off this. But he's probably not retiring this year. I don't know. Maybe he <laughs> no, is. He's not. <laughs> maybe he's not. Apple is in it for the long game. So while all these other tech companies that are only making phones and they're dumping all their money into phones. And then they aren't making any more money because nobody's buying any more phones. Apple is building this foundation that will help this company grow so that by the time your partner does retire, that $1,000 that he lost this year will turn into $100,000. Well, he was going to retire. And, he only this loses, story, and then you Apple only ruined lose it. the money once you actually <laughs> sell it. So. Exactly. Yeah. That's so not it's, real it's money. The potential right now. Yeah. of, you know, well, I guess it's real money, but, but, you know, but it. Yeah. It's like, only real well, money like once you liquidate. I right, guess, exactly. What, you know. Do you know exactly. how many yeah. Chihuahua yeah. sweaters you can buy for that much Apple? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see if I can convince him to cash in his uh, loss in Apple stock. For Chihuahua sweater futures? Chihuahua sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a big seller. Renee, you mentioned something that I do want to talk about because yeah. I think that the timing of it was pretty great. Um, not long after um, the letter from Tip, Tim Cook came out, which was, it came out January 2nd. On January 3rd, Apple released a um, statement saying that the App Store caps record-breaking 2018 with Blockbuster Holiday Week, which includes um, the App Store spending topped 1.22 $1 billion just between Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, and they had a single record-breaking day of $322 million on New Year's Day 2019. And that kind of like solidifies or supports what we're talking about, which is that, um, you know, out, while phone sales are stagnating, Apple is increasing and, and having a robust services industry that's really going to help keep it in, in you know, keep it in <laughs> silver and, and gold and diamonds because, because this is how it's growing is that Apple saw the writing on the wall long enough ago that they decided that they were going to start, you know, kind of building that foundation and it's all, it's working. So that like Renee, what Renee is saying about how the install base continues to grow even when phone sales drop, those installs are what is going to spur this sort of future proofing of the company and keep it going and keeping it alive. I just, I think the um, App Store. Um, yeah, I mean, the App Store is super interesting. Um, like there, there's a little bit of bad news there. Like companies like Netflix are trying to pull away. Even Epic with Fortnite on Android is trying to pull away because they're getting to the size where they think that they don't, we don't, we just, we shouldn't have to share even a single percentage of our income with stupid app stores. Um, <laughs> so Fortnite has gone to side loading on Android and Netflix is just, is doing like an Amazon thing where they're just not telling, they're just not linking to subscriptions anymore. Like you've got to subscribe on Netflix.com, but then you can use, use the app on your iOS device. And that's going to be interesting to see um, how far that'll go and how and how much that'll go. And that's uh, also that, been that's been happening for quite a while now that companies have been trying to figure out ways that they can navigate around the percentage that they have to pay to Apple for their subscription. And I don't blame them for that because they, you know, they want to make as much money as they can. Hey, I if don't I think was selling in Walmart, I would not want Walmart to take their 55% cut of my lawnmower. You know, I would love it to just have my lawnmower on Walmart shelves and get to keep all the money that people pay for it. Well, <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's not quite the same as the buy and sell version of it, which is why a paid app is, you know, that, that's like a solid 
you know, you're, 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 you're putting your app on our shelf. So we're taking a percentage of it. The subscription is a little bit different because that's kind of this, this long-term version. Um, and I think that there is potential for a way to kind of create a working contract that um, the companies that have subscription and the companies that service the device that the subscription is being held on can both profit from, um, you know, just kind of saying no to Apple isn't a good way to do it because I think in the long run, things are going to, that that's going to backfire, you know, for Netflix, for example, that at some point, you know, Apple will probably, if this starts to be a problem, Apple will say something like, you can't have your app in our store if you force them to navigate somewhere else to in order to subscribe. Like my my ideal would be for Apple to just relax their rules and then compete based on experience. Like Apple can say, yo, Netflix, you know, if you want to put a button like subscribe online, that's fine. We're going to make it so easy to pay with Apple Pay and iTunes that people are going to prefer to come through us. Mm -hmm. And if they do come through us, then we're going to take a cut. And they go through you, that's fine. You keep you, that's good. Yeah, but I you're going to have to ramp up your experience game if you want to compete with us. <laughs> And that's a great way to kind of like have that compromise where the company who has the device that we're using the service on and the company that's providing the service or subscription, can, they can both have their cake, you know, like this, this mm -hmm. is, there is a way that both can, can work in the future. Yeah. I think that if Apple was... comes off as dictatorial, dictatorial, as a bunch dictatorial? of dictatorial dictators, thank you. I think that it just ends up. Potato tutorial. Potato tutorial, I think is what it is. Potato tutorial? Yeah. Uh -huh. Fair, fair. It's fair. tomato tutorial. Tomato okay, gotcha. Tomato, tomato, <laughs> potato. Yeah, potato. yeah. They they end up it ends up looking bad for Apple. And I think that it's it's just bad in the long run. People are already ready to to take out their pitchforks for Apple for any known reason to that. Um and it, they again, I think like Renee said, if they offer a better product people will end up doing that. I think that that's what was great with Apple Music. It was so easy that people said, you know what, 99 cents is better than free because I feel good doing it and it's really cheap and really easy and really seamless. And I think that they could do the same thing with this. Yeah, I like it because instead of, like I love that about the Mac app stores that I just go to the Mac app store, I go download, 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 and all my apps are yep. back. I don't have to go to a bunch of web pages God, and hunt for yeah. them. And if the difference is like, I have to go, like I get a new phone, I set it up, I've got to log into Netflix, log into mm -hmm. this, log into that. That's a lot of work. But if it's just, you know, I open the app, it face IDs me, it logs in with my yeah. my app, my iTunes thing, and they're all good to go. That to me is an advantage, and I would do that. And then yeah. Apple just logging in your Netflix password is enough to stop me from having <laughs> to do any of that. So. I'll yeah. just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You're charged for the auto password, Phil. One cent Netflix. I'll do it. <laughs> but it is huge revenue. It's like billions and billions of dollars. And it does, it is is one of the tent poles of Apple services business. So it's super interesting to see that. Phil Schiller was so happy he tweeted it out. It's wild. <laughs> that, I mean, and, and all the things, uh, like uh, the one thing that kind of makes me sad about Apple being a services business is. It's kind of floss, sorry. Oh, I thought you. I thought you, had, I thought you were about to like uh, guess what I was going to say for the um, Fortnite money about Apple being a services business is that they consider themselves like partially a Dropbox company, and so that that cost for storage, um, iCloud storage is like a part of the the you know the monthly pay that you 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 put in monthly subscription, and that kind of makes me sad. Like I want there to be more at the base, and I hope. But I don't see this happening because of the way that uh, our friendly dude bros over on Wall Street are freaking out about Apple making less money with hardware. Then Apple has to, you know, be this services company, and part of that services company and part of the money that's being made there has to do with storage and the subscription fees there. And like, if there's one complaint I hear from family, who like I always say consider me to be Apple, even though I'm not Apple, <laughs> I swear, uh, is that they run out of storage space. And, you yeah. know, they lament the idea of having to update their phones and not being able to because they got to clear stuff off, the phone, all that kind of stuff. And it all has to do with storage. And I just wish that if, you know, if we're going to be in the services company, let's make the, you know, subscription uh, service a terabyte and two terabytes or something like that, so as opposed to the 200 question. gigabytes. How much would you pay for Apple Prime, like an, an Amazon Prime style oh. service where you pay once a, a month or once a year and you get all the, the new TV stuff, Apple Music, um, not unlimited, but like two terabytes of iCloud storage and all the other services that Apple provides all like in one tidy little package? 
a hundred to one hundred fifty dollars a year uh, would be awesome. Like I don't know because what is isn't Apple Prime Music like a, is one twenty now? I think. Okay, yeah, so and you're, less. yeah, and then well, no, because I mean, you're talking about combining iCloud storage and two hundred dollars Apple Music and. You know, the their, their their future TV stuff. That's actually a that's it's a extra lot. subscription. Everything's magazine good service. except for the Apple TV stuff. That one I'm not so sure about. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston and Reese well, Witherspoon. You get it as no, TV. No. It's just like an extra though, because like Pack there's the I don't really watch mm -hmm. Amazon Prime Video, but I have that as part of like, Ronald the Moore reason that I have show. Amazon Prime is, is for, for the two day delivery, yeah. one day delivery. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so like the rest of it's just like a benefit. So yeah. I would pay like twenty bucks a month if I didn't have to pay all of these separate fees for different things. And I got like a great, uh, great storage service. I got my Apple Music subscription and my TV subscription. Maybe and like 20, 25 magazines. bucks, 25 bucks a month. Oh my God. And magazines. That would be yeah. such an incredible deal. But I think that the magazines also have to kind of be like a throw in. Like, I think that that's not something that people really. But that's what, instead of on its own, everything is a throw, but like the value. No, of all of it no. Combined. Apple Music is not a throw in and iCloud storage is not a that's throw in. Because that you hate magazines will... doesn't mean everybody hates magazines. I know. Stories. I was, let's I be was honest. Just thinking the, the reason I got no, into no, journalism no, no, was because be of magazines. <laughs> um, I, it's just perspective we take, true, yo. Though. That's okay, but there's very few people. There's it's just not, not the same that do, do Apple Music. My mom subscribes to textures. Your mom. Okay, let's be honest. Your mom is the Whoa. sweetest person in the world who actually buys magazine magazines. So Me too. that doesn't count. Yeah. See? So you're the rarity. You've now offended my mom and Lori, Georgia. How no, many she not, do no just, mama jokes, please. Come on. It's, it's just different <laughs> for people that actually buy magazines. Then that would be a difference. But it's not the same amount of people that get Apple Music. And if you would even say the disparity between the two is huge to that. So those unfortunately don't really count. For most people, that would not be a buy-in factor to oh, that. savage like, in the new year. Just savage. No, and you're competing against Amazon and Netflix and other places that will offer the services that, that people Netflix pay in. Netflix so they can't, has video. They, they do, don't have music. But they do it really well. They do, and I'll pay for it. But That's if Netflix really went well. to $20, <laughs> then I would think about dropping out. Oh, same. But if, yeah. So what if you got Netflix like, music and Netflix video? So like Apple Music, I like the storage. I definitely need to have, yes. and that's really where it ends. And I think that for most people, that's kind of where they feel the same way. I see, I'm Apple Apple Apple, if I'm wrong. You get storage. Apple Care for all your devices as well. Oh my God! You're Stop just it, making Renee. it oh, easy now, oh, Renee. Oh, oh now you're pulling out not. the big guns, Renee. <laughs> no, that actually would be. Now that's now you're talking. That I'd pay thirty bucks a month if but I get. Wait, there's more. Apple Care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like Oprah, Apple. Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. If I got Apple, Apple Care, Care, you get Apple Care. Apple you Care get on Apple all Care. of my devices. I could do two ninety nine a year. See. Yep. Now we're talking. Now, now we can talking. throw out some big guns. Yeah. Now, now you, you got can... the stuff that I want. Lori is just counting the services revenue dollars in her head right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. I could see a lot of people then going in if they did that. I think that would be a brilliant idea. Yep. So there's a lot of levers that, right? they could pull. Like they could pull like one on one training at an Apple. Like you get free like, Ooh, I like, like that. There's, there's so many things that they I could like add that to too. And I probably would never use it because I, yeah, I Google, <laughs> but I would love to have it. Ooh, also, if you have Apple Prime, you get free shipping on everything. It doesn't have to be Ooh. over a certain amount of money. Ooh, what if you got free, like, you know, whatever, five day shipping or something? Or free, so you get free for all your Apple stuff. Yeah, five well, day, Georgia. Know. No one. Well, she's well, from Canada, Micah. I'm Please in be Canada. easy. Oh, it okay. takes like a week for us to get everything. <laughs> oh, okay. I like... would do anything that's sooner than that. Like, I don't think that they could compete with like the next day shipping for like you buy stuff. That would be amazing. Five day shipping. That's a nightmare. I know. <laughs> a nightmare. <laughs> you know what? We are so spoiled with Amazon. That is a first world problem that we are it's spoiled so with Amazon. Martin, but you're probably Martin right. Yeah. has Amazon same day. Like, I don't even know what to say. I know. That. I'm mad really? about that. I have Amazon Australia has same day. Terrible shipping. I have had things delivered to my house three hours after I ordered it. That's on not Amazon. fair, Lori Gill. It's crazy. not fair. Yeah. No, it's but not. You get it delivered by everything. drone because yeah. I want the drone. That it that will happen in Sacramento probably if it happens just because we're so close to the headquarters. Oh, I like love we'll, it. we will probably get that pretty early. I want it on video. You have to make a post whenever oh that God, happens because yes. I want to see it. Okay. I tried Amazon Prime drone. 
Here's how it went. <laughs> yes, yes. What are you kidding? Everyone's yeah. three on people that. who died to get my Amazon drone delivery. To be doesn't honest. matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Here are the three people injured by my Amazon Prime. Lori drone. closed down three U UK airports, but she got her delivery. On the yeah, airport. that doesn't matter. No one Here cares. Are the government agencies I angered with my Amazon. This Prime is how many drone. dogs were scared to death. Yeah, doesn't matter. Here are the birds killed by my Amazon. Prime. <laughs> Twelve I birds. I just see killed. a whole bunch of people stealing the drones. That's just absolutely like a well, Buzzfeed yeah. quiz. Is what bird killed by the Amazon Prime drone are you? <laughs> I'm an eagle. <laughs> oh, this show got dark so fast. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm just a pigeon, unfortunately. That one died pretty easily. Oh, boy. Uh, before we move on to the rest of the show, whatever's left, uh, I do want to tell you all uh, <laughs> about our pals at Thrifter. Thrifter. So Thrifter is a way to save money based on value, not hype. It is all the stuff and none of the fluff. It's at thrifter.com. Uh, if you head to thrifter.com, you're gonna find thoughtfully selected deals from places like Amazon, Best Buy. You're gonna not only find deals, but also announcements for new products, pre-orders, sort of you can get in early on the stuff that's not available and then also get the good deals on the stuff that is available all at thrifter.com by signing up you'll be uh access you'll gain access to a newsletter a newsletter not newsletter although it does come later and that will have the best of the best deals included in said newsletter uh you can also just head to the site which has every single one of the deals that they come across day in and day out and Lori Gill has been looking at the site and is going to point out a deal or two for us. Lori I'm Gill. Sorry. Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to buy this um, Lego BB-8. That oh, is I did see the Lego, Lego BB-8. It was very cute. <laughs> uh, this one will be for Serenity Caldwell, if you're <laughs> listening. Um, the BB-8. And do you oh. see the little baby BB-8 next to it? Yes. Oh, it's so tiny. <laughs> Uh, it normally sells for uh, $99.99, $100, and it's on sale for $79. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty cool. I remember when this first came out, I was drooling over it. So at that price, it's it's still kind of pricey for Legos, but it's it's definitely more affordable. If you're a Lego fan, if you're a Star Wars fan, <clears throat> this is a good deal. Agreed. And uh, if you're a big reader and want some of the classic novels, Samuel Clements, uh, otherwise known as Mark Twain, for a dollar, you can get 12 Mark Twain books. Just a dollar and you get 12 of those books. That's incredible. Uh, so be sure to check out all those deals over at thrifter.com where you can sign up by clicking newsletter at the top. If you're from Canada or the UK, there are some little flags at the top right of the screen where you can switch to the deals available in Canada or the UK. You can also follow at Thrifter Daily on Twitter or at Thrifter UK or at Thrifter CA, depending on if you are in the UK or Canada, respectively. And that will give you all those awesome deals. Thanks so much, Thrifter, for sponsoring this week's episode of the iMore Show. Let's move on to uh, anything else we have to talk about this week. I mean, the big the big news was uh apple's you know earnings but um anything else as we as we kick off this new year maybe uh have you revised what you what you're hoping to see in in this in this coming year or are we still kind of in the same place that we were can i give a twist uh, to that like, question oh, I love because I, I want renee's phone that he had no, uh, that mock-up oh my oh, yeah phone? the purple can you show can you put that on the logo? screen it is the coolest thing ever it's purple it has the glowing apple thing i'm like oh it, it has a glowing apple logo it too? has a glowing oh, apple logo it's purple and i want it so badly if apple made this phone i'd buy two <laughs> just because just one like, each foot? Please <laughs> make I, more. I just one in case it scratches yeah, my day it's phone the my prettiest phone. yeah gotta remember how to share a screen on it there we go i oh, am purple i am the night <laughs> I you want green, I want purple. purple. All right, so we are we are the opposites. Oh, See, this is, this is why I'm so doomed, and this oh. is what how they can be undoomed by making a purple glowy phone. Yes, <laughs> it's not even a maybe. That phone is okay. That is a slick. Hot phone. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's really good looking. I want that phone. That's what it's I want. I uploaded first that didn't oh. censor all of John Gruber's curse words, so I had to re-upload it with. <laughs> All of the curse words properly censored. How did you? What did you use for censor? Just like a beep, or did you do? No, I just cut it out. Oh, <laughs> you're silent. Should have second. said Apple. 
or what the apple is about noise. the apple. I didn't want to draw attention to the cursed words. I just wanted to sanitize Fair. them. Fair. Fair. Still want yeah, that phone. Okay. Chloe. Yeah. It's hot. That's, that's H-A-W-P. That is it. And that is the nine features that you want. The nine features that I want to see. Is, yeah, yeah. Nine things I want Apple to steal from other phone companies this year. I want it. How do I stop staring my this what's is the of the nine, <laughs> Renee? What's what's the one if you could pick one of those nine for Apple Ooh, to steal? And I question. don't mean I don't mean one you think they'll steal, but one you wish they one, would steal the yeah. most. Oh, the, no, no, no contest. The Viv stuff. Like the Viv is the people who made Siri and they went to uh, they left Apple. Apple did not buy them, much to my chagrin. And now they're at Samsung being drowned in Bixby BS. Um, and their original vision, I don't know if I'll ever see it, but their original vision was just an assistant that, uh, I don't know if they would do the cloud-based version that Viv wanted because I think they could do one that was that was device-based but had the same functionality. But basically any app just ties into it. You don't have to download an app anymore. You just tell it what you want to do and it knows what apps do that and it pulls that functionality and does it. And like, I just want to be able to say like, for example, launch Pokemon Go, put my uh, put, put a lucky egg on and show me all the Pokemon that I can evolve. Like until we get to the level of Jarvis, like from Iron Man 2 or like Iron Man 1, where you're just talking to it and it just does what you want. Like people still criticize Apple for Siri being behind and it absolutely is. It's like, it's disgusting how neglected Siri was for so many years uh, and they got to fight hard for it. But this business is so early. We're like in the Xerox Park stages of, of interface. We're not even at the Palm Pilot yet in terms of digital assistance because none of these things outside of Marvel movies can do what it needs to do yet. So there's an opportunity there. And Apple just made uh, John Gianandrea a senior vice president He's on the exec committee now. He runs AI. He used to run AI in search at Google and now he runs AI at Apple. Just let that man loose, make me a Siri OS and let me, let me just talk and have everything that I say just happen. Uh, yes. None of this weirdness anymore. Whoever gets that will own the next generation of interface and it's totally up for grabs still. I Amen. just, I still like, I love what you're talking about, but I just want Siri to actually do what I ask it to do. <laughs> I'm still at the stage well, where. That's true. That's true. But I mean, like they're all, uh, they're all so dumb that like the, if they were a real person, you'd fire them. Oh yeah, I mean, no, and I'm, not, I'm certainly not saying that um, Siri is worse than any of the other. It could be, no, I mean, it could be the absolute worst, but all of them are like <laughs> kindergarten kids and we need a high school student badly. Yeah, definitely. And I, yeah, I love, I love the idea that like <laughs> Renee, what you were saying, you were kind of laying out this, basically this shortcut, really, when you think about it, it's just like, we are like shortcuts doesn't do the kind of level of detail that you do, but the shortcut where shortcuts with Siri, like Siri shortcuts cannot be built with Siri. And if they could, then it starts to get real interesting. That's yeah. Like if that were possible, that would be so fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Like every time it's Friday, let me remind me there's a podcast because I'm obviously too dumb uh, to think about that. Because I'm so driving much. and can't get home in time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm video games, so I, I'm I'm with there. You know, Georgia was murdering orcs again, Micah. Oh, you might remember that from previous. Are you serious? Podcasts. My kids are started playing, and then I bit the bug. And wait, now, that's and not true though. You're not murdering them. You're releasing them, them from their. What is it? Freeing them. Mortal suffering. Freeing them from their suffering. Correct. Yes. Good. I'm showing Good for you. It's. it's it's a holy quest. <laughs> on, on your list, Renee, I think just going through all the things that you have here, I think Night Sight, Google has Night Sight on, I think it's the Pixel 3 phone. Tell me if yep. I'm wrong on that. Yep, yep. Um, I have a friend who used it and it was really impressive. <laughs> so yep. I, I would think that would be great if we could I get want that so some kind bad. of... Yeah, There's like two things about it that I think Apple could improve though. One is it like a lot of Google stuff is a post process. Like they don't do live portrait mode. It does it afterwards. And Apple tends to like live stuff. They want it to look like it's a real camera. So if Apple could fake it while it's live, but also some photographers have said they don't like it because it turns nighttime into day and all they want is better nighttime. So if it could uh, like also turn nighttime into evening, I think that would be great. Right. And and the the camera on the iPhone 10s especially, it's great at nighttime. It really is. I took some incredible pictures um New Year's Eve. We were outside in the backyard and the only light coming from anything was the the fire from the fire pit. And I took these great pictures. Um, but I like the idea of really being able to kind of pull out a lot of um, a lot of background that you can't see in night photos. And the great thing about Google's ability about night night sight, it doesn't look bad. It 
it's this idea where I think we've probably all done this before where we took a picture in the dark or in a dark room and we were trying to get like, you know, something in the bush or something that was kind of far off. So then we just like hike up the brightness mm -hmm. and it's real noisy and it looks terrible and you still can't see that object that you were trying to get a picture of. Nightside actually turns up the brightness and does it takes out all that noise. So it does a pretty darn good job of that. And, and I love learning to merge a bunch of frames to get rid of the motion blur, but also because white balance is totally shot when you do that, it uses machine learning to try to figure out what the white balance should be and then reapplies it. Yeah, and Apple is really good at doing these kinds of things. I think they could, if they were gonna steal from, from uh, Google, this is a good one to steal. And just like what you're saying, Renee, I would love to see it a little more on the live end of the spectrum. And um, I would love to like really make it as bright as day, but maybe even have like- um, A dial, right? A dial, so you can adjust just how bright you really want it to be. Sort of like, yeah, yeah portrait mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be pretty it cool. solved all the problems in the universe. I feel good. <gasps> oh! Oh no, you didn't. <gasps> oh, Someone had her little, she's just been grown. Oh, the little oh. bows, are those bows? With her bows. What a sweet baby. So for those of you listening, instead of watching, uh, Dog has entered the scene. Ewok. What's 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 baby's name? Mila. This is Mila. Mila. Hello, Mila. Hi, Mila. We love you. Mila. <laughs> oh, she can't hear us. You're wearing headphones. That's she right. can't hear us. No. <laughs> <laughs> My baby. Oh, what a cutie. Yeah. Well, she's like, she's pretty bald now. She was like all muffed of fur, but she was a big knot. And oh, so yeah. You got to get rid of it after a while if it sticks out. Yeah. Exactly. So cute. Well, um, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Well, let's uh, talk about what I'm doing next week before we say what is goodbye. It? What is it? I'm going to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. My very first one. I'm very Woo! excited. So I will oh, be right. This will have be you been to Vegas before? before? I've been to Vegas before. Okay. Vegas is crazy. What happens? Uh, to Vegas, yeah, Vegas is very different, though. Um, it's will a it bunch stay? of nerds trying to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. not, it doesn't stay in Vegas. It is broadcast live. Lori. Yeah, that goes everywhere. Oh, no. So I don't. I don't get to do anything that doesn't uh, track me down in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta watch out because there's always somebody live streaming near you. That we did the Bronco. Like we all rode the. Mechanical. Yeah, okay. Georgia won the riding the bull contest, the the first annual Mobile Nations bull riding contest. Kevin got thrown, Renee got thrown, everybody got thrown. And Georgia's like, I could do this all night. Oh my goodness! <laughs> of course. I think they go easier on the girls. I'll be honest, but that's just my thought on it. <laughs> that's awesome. So tell so me what else to expect. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah let's talk about this. So one thing for the love of God, Lori Gill, please hydrate, hydrate, yeah. hydrate. You're going to be doing a lot of walking. <laughs> Um, and, and hand cream that has silicone. Okay. So I, do, I do have silicone hand cream. I didn't even think about that. That's a great idea. But you have to, like, you're in the States, so it doesn't matter. I guess traveling state to state isn't going to be a difference to carry it. But it was really, really dry in a mm. massive amount of way that you did, you don't even expect it. You're right. Yeah. Drink so much water. Uh, yeah. Stay, stay hydrated. Stay, uh, like, uh, your skin, keep that hydrated. Also, of course, of course, I chose to like the week before I went, um, do a bunch of a moon, a moon. No, not a moose bushing immune boosting stuff. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm really into amuse bushing. <laughs> amuse <year>. bushing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but while you're there, like sanitize too. Cause he, like just so many people are touching so much stuff and it's also Vegas. So everything's already slimy. I've already um, heard about the dreaded uh, CES flu that goes around. Yeah, so I'm, I'm preparing ahead of time with, um, you know, emergency and, you know, Perfect. vitamin boosting things too. And I will be continuing that the entire time I'm there too. So I just sleep in an helps. autoclave. I just, and I hope for the best. As far <laughs> as the show itself, there's no possible way to see everything. So don't like, you know, don't get sad if you don't get a chance to see everything because you're literally not going to be able to. Um, pick the stuff that you are really excited yes. about and then plan out your scope and wear good shoes. Shoes. <laughs> so sore don't wear shoes that are pretty wear shoes that are comfortable yes do not try to look hot don't try to look well you can look hot from like the shoes and, upwards but head don't to ankle 
<laughs> and plan out where you're going to go to get the coolest stuff. Cause we want like, you know, Sans expo do that's what I was going to, that was my last tip was that all the rest of it's fun. But if you don't go to the Sands expo, you're missing out on the fun, cool, weird stuff. The Sands expo has the fun, cool, weird stuff. Don't skip out on that. And also watch out because there are these people uh, that stand along the entryways to all the different buildings. And they have like, two business i'm trying to find like two cards they have two business cards stack they have a whole stack but they take two business cards and they do this little clicking noise and they're trying to get you to pay attention to them to take these little business cards and when you whenever you take a business card from them it just has naked photos on them and it's club promoting <laughs> people wait, wait. <clears throat> why would i skip that every, <laughs> every single year i've gone to ces somebody's clicking at me with their doggone <laughs> cards trying to get me to go to their like 2 a.m club and i'm like i have work to do i'm not going to your nudie club for the love why of can't God. your club be at 80 at 8 p.m like oh, a yeah if your club was at 8 p.m i'd go to the doggone nudie club but not 2 a.m. <laughs> this must be only for the boys because this didn't happen to me at all. Really? It happened to me every single time. I'd be like, oh, here come the clickers. That's what I started to call them. <laughs> But then, in all fairness, they're not all just nudie clubs. Like some of them are, are stupid tourist stuff. Like you want to go up in this tower or on this Ferris yeah. wheel, or it's like anything that they can try to force into your hand. I also saw a man urinate on a window while I was at a restaurant. So. The first time I got to my first CES, I got to the hotel and there was a drunken person in a Mickey Mouse suit with like day old vomit just lying <laughs> on the front terrace. And I'm like, I guess it really is Vegas. <laughs> now you know you're in Vegas. Oh, and do not take a taxi. Those okay. taxis will, and like most people don't these days because they know Uber and, and Lyft, but sometimes you're like, oh, Uber and Lyft is so busy. I'm just going to take a taxi. No, those taxis will charge you a bajillion dollars. Don't do it. I'll walk or take the bus. And everyone should send Lori uh, the messages of things they want to see. So <laughs> yeah. She to plan out her day. Everybody send Lori I, so many last, messages. <laughs> my last yes, we got into a t we got into a car. I think it was a cab or a black car. I don't remember to go from the airport to the hotel. And the driver the entire time was telling us how he was about to be arrested because he violated a restraining order by using a drone to spy on his ex-wife. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm like, my God. Is yes. <laughs> Yeah, there was a man, uh, Chella, uh, who some of you might remember from the I More show in the past she's been on. Uh, Chella and I were in a car with a man who was convinced of every single conspiracy theory that ever existed. And so he was telling us all about that, um, which was an interesting conversation. And Home pods leave chemtrails. Home pods leave chemtrails. All of it. And for, for any of our Las Vegas listeners, I've <laughs> been to Las Vegas at least a dozen times in my life, and I have had nothing but wonderful experiences. A we're not dozen? that you're all crazy no it must just be the ces thing like it they must know that be. a bunch of rich nerds are around so they're it gonna be. be weirder the last thing i'll say though is please remember to take as many battery packs as you possibly can like that's yes. and there's always free coffee there's always oh, free coffee you can I, find free coffee somewhere there's I can always use some free, free coffee, coffee. <laughs> take all the advantage of those especially like the press areas like once mm -hmm. you have your press pass ooh buddy there are some good foods and free coffee really in those press food. areas and you get a free lunch too which i usually took advantage of nice if you remember the press i'm excited i'm very excited I, there's so many um you know, I we get the little sort of press announcements under embargo and so, just a few. And some of them I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go see that at CES. That's going to be really cool. So oh, that's <laughs> I funny. can't wait to tell everybody what my favorite um, products to come out of CES are going to be. I think the worst part is most of the time and I, like maybe you can I'm wrong and you can tell me that. But I think they show you this really yeah. great thing and it doesn't come out till like the end of the yes. year. No, if it, if it comes wait. Out. Yeah, if it comes out. My yeah. favorite thing is finding the worst it's like, products. <laughs> it's meant for like Best Buy to buy stuff that's going to be on sale at Christmas, like to see all the stuff that they're going to have on their shelves in time for the big holiday season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's too long for me to wait because there's some things that as soon as I see that come up, I'm like, oh, win, win, some win. I got a sooner. chihuahua painted on my fingernail the Ew. second year that I went and that nail machine is still not out. And, and that makes me sad because like that and was such a cool thing. For it, I'm got still waiting for an iPhone running. case and I don't know if that's that ever came out. What's that? Georgia got tasered by an iPhone case and I don't know if that ever came out. You, you allowed them to taser you? Yep. Was it a super <laughs> yep. weak... Um, buzz or did, did it knock you it on your hurt, floor? Mark, it did hurt. <laughs> oh my god! <gosh. laughs> they actually were so worried about being sued. 
um, that, uh, that I think I had to tase myself. I started sweating. Then people started coming around waiting just to see me fall down and scream. <laughs> yeah, it didn't like really interesting on the amount of interest that people had. For Performance some anxiety all of a sudden. I don't do it either. Everyone was like, yeah, let's watch. Like they were not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and you're Renee, like, did you get that on camera? Myself. Like, Lord God. I think your husband got it on camera, didn't he? Oh, I, I want to see that. Out there. Like if you look up Georgia and Taze, I think that you'd find it. Oh my God. I'm looking that up as soon as we're Georgia done. Georgia Tazing. <laughs> um, oh my God, Georgia Taser. What? <laughs> like that was a Google search result. Really, is it? Oh, no, this was because Georgia legalized stun guns and tasers on college campuses. Oh. <laughs> you did, Georgia? How dare you? Yeah, Georgia, what are you thinking? Um, so I think that is going to do it for us this week, uh, folks. This is, of course, the I'm More Show. I don't know why I'm telling you that. I want to thank you all so much for listening. Uh, thank you, of course, to Jim Metzendorf for editing the show, making us all sound great. George Dow, if people want to, uh, you know, get some help with, with things like anxiety and depression and emotional intelligence, you got a place they could do that, don't you? We do. We do. You can uh, check out anxiety-videos.com. We have uh, emotional intelligence and conflict resolution. And if you're looking for that tase video, it's Georgia Gets Tased. Uh, Yellow Jacket is the name of the case, so you can just print that in and it'll come up at YouTube um, because that's probably what. Or CAS 2014 Georgia Imore. That oh no, someone else is act. Don't don't look at that one. Someone else has just st oh. stolen it from us. <laughs> don't go to that one. Don't go. Let's forget about that one. <laughs> Georgia gets taste. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Renee Ritchie, if people are looking for you online, where can they find you? You can find me at Renee Ritchie on all the social things. You can find me at imore.com slash vector for the words and at youtube.com slash vector show for the video, 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 yeah. Lori Gill, if people are looking for you online, where can they find you? They can find me watching Georgia gets tased at CES oh my God. live by a yellow jacket case. That's the full name of it. <laughs> Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> and, um, okay, sorry, they can find me um, at Apocaholic on Twitter, A P P A H O L I K, and at Lori Gill at most other social things, and at iMore, where next week I will be on the ground covering CES. So tweet me the things at me, the things that you want me to go check out, and I will do my best to check everything out and take pictures for you. Uh, Georgia, your hair is on fleek <laughs> in this video. <laughs> Um, and if you're, you're looking for me online, you can find me at Micah Sargent on most social things, or you can head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A dot coffee, uh, which will have links to all the different things I do. You can find all of our writing over at imore.com. Uh, this folks has been the iMore show. Goodbye.